representative is pushing to make sure all unpaid employees, including interns, have equal rights. Even though residents are more than thrilled that their hometown is ranked 8th in the state, one city official doesn't feel the same way. After receiving an alert from the police, it's a good idea to stay where you are and close the door. Unfortunately, many of the doors at Michigan State don't lock, just like this one. Anyone could come by from the outside and open it right back up again. Many outside the farming industry wondered why he chose to sign it here at MSU. Even though Michigan Senator Debbie Stabenow authored the bill, it was more than just a favor to her. It is good to be in East Lansing. It's good to with be with all With the stroke of his pen, today. the deal was done. President Barack Obama signed the 2014 Farm Bill into law. There you go. The new law affects the entire nation, but Obama's trip to Michigan acknowledges that this bill is especially important for Michiganders. Our Senator Debbie Stabenow has worked so hard on the Farm Bill. As the chairwoman of the Senate Agricultural Committee, Michigan Senator Debbie Stabenow authored the bill and worked for three years to push it through Congress. Thanks to a whole lot of hard work, we've arrived at a farm bill that works for every American. And the bill being signed here at Michigan State University is more than just a respectful nod to Senator Stabenow's alma mater. Michigan State University, formerly Michigan Agricultural College, was established as the pioneer land grant college, which meant the government could grant land for research and teaching in agriculture. The agricultural background that this institution has, uh, its connection to a lot of the policies that are in this bill are one of the reasons why the president's here in East Lansing. But Michigan's success in agriculture might have been the biggest reason for Obama to sign it here. We're second only to California in diversity. Our dairy industry is the eighth largest dairy industry in the nation. The productivity of our dairy cows in Michigan is fifth in the nation. So there's there's so much to be proud of in this state, and it's you know we're getting a day, we're getting a day in the news around the world, and this is this is great. Thank you, President Barack Obama. For Focal Point, I'm Mara Thompson. Internships are becoming crucial for college students. Last year, 63% of graduates had at least one on their resume. But students say it's hard when they're unpaid. I was living in New York with spending all my money on housing and everything for doing an unpaid internship. Like that's how much I was giving in to get something for my resume. MSU senior Paige my Wassel has done three unpaid internships and says it's worth my... it being able to put the big names on her resume. The thing is with internships, unless it becomes a law that they should be paid, people will offer to do them for free. Because I know that summer I really needed something for my resume and if, so, if they hired someone else for $9 an hour, I would have been like, hey, like I'll do it for free. Yet an unpaid internship could come with bigger problems as it has recently been discovered that harassment and discrimination laws in most states do not cover unpaid workers. And here at the Capitol, Representative David Knesik is pushing for all unpaid employees, including interns, to be protected. Sometimes you pass laws and you think that when they come under legal scrutiny that they will apply to uh, everybody and what you find when you go to court is that maybe that uh, those laws don't. David Knesik is referring to the 1976 Elliott Larson Act that protects employees from discrimination and harassment, but doesn't include unpaid interns. So Knesik introduced a bill that does. Introduced this bill to make sure that all of our workers, uh, volunteers, interns, specifically students who are trying to gain additional credit for college, uh, are protected under the law if they're the victims of sexual harassment or, or any other type of uh, sort of attack on, on who they are and, and their character. Kinesic said a lawsuit in New York is what influenced him to introduce this bill and is confident it'll pass through the House. It's extremely important that something gets put into place. Students agree this bill is important for their safety. For Focal Point, I'm Mara Thompson. Pope Francis may be new to the papacy, but he's already made an impact. It's called the Pope Francis effect. A lot of my friends who have been away from the church said now this is a pope that speaks to my heart. The Center for the Study of New Religion surveyed 250 priests. 51% say they've seen a significant rise in church going since Francis' election. And even young people are excited about the new pope. He's charismatic enough and loving enough that people are drawn to that type of person. Pope Francis's selfless personality isn't the only thing gaining him popularity. He has been making changes to the church, which can be seen around the world, including here at St. John's. Never before have people responded like that to me before. They go, oh, we got a new pope, and you know, 
oh gosh, more rules, oh, more changes. But this one is like, oh my gosh, more changes for the better. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so wonderful for all of us. Changes like not focusing on abortion, gay marriage, and divorce, but instead on helping those in need. People can really relate to him and look to him as an example, not so much as just a power authority, but also as a service-oriented person that they can relate to. And oh yeah, I can do that too. Um, maybe you won't be the Pope, but you know, you can live a good Catholic life like that. For Focal Point, I'm Mara Thompson. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to stand before you today and commemorate the great achievements, revolution, and the fight for justice Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. accomplished. Ready? We're here to celebrate, you know, the life and the legacy of brother Dr. Martin Luther King. And, you know, pretty much this march is to show our appreciation and our love for everything that he's done for us and the way and the path that he's paved for all of us African Americans today. I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident and that all men are created equal. Dr. King had a dream, the dream was steeped in reality, that the future could be better, and only with uh, enlightened, uh, sharp, energetic, talented minds that we have in front of us uh, can it go forward. So I say to you, uh, we all can be free at last, but you're going to have to carry your part of it.